Ay, isang araw na naman ang lumipas. Trabaho ulit. Effective pa ba kaya akong manager? I can even motivate my subordinates. Well, hindi ko nga mag-motivate sarili ko eh. Oh, gosh. I don't even know what motivation meant right now. Mabuhay BSBA, this is Christine Joy Ragados, your HBO Patroller, and you are watching HBO Patrol. Today we have different stories from different time and different location but only have one goal. Before we start, an update has been made with regards to the terminus of job performance. Based on the data collected, here are the determinants made. The capacity to perform relates to the degree to which the employees possesses skills, knowledge, abilities, and experiences relevant to his job. Next is the opportunity to perform will depend on the work environment provided to the employee. Another determinants made are the willingness to perform relates to the degree to which an employee desire is willing to exert an effort to achieve the goals assigned to him. Do you know what motivation is? If you don't, let's find out from Norman Joe. Thank you, Christine. For today's report, we will define and discuss what is motivation. Actually, motivation is derived from the word motive, which means needs, desires, want, or drives within the individuals. As a matter of fact, Motivation may be defined as the process of activating behavior, sustaining it, and directing it toward a particular goal. Also, motivation moves people to act and accomplish, and motivation is the willingness to perform. In the workplace, motivation may be more specifically defined as the set of internal and external forces that causes a worker employee to choose a course of action and engage in a certain behavior. Example of which is when an employee was not performing his or her job as expected. The boss decided to motivate his employees and promised to give a team bonus if they achieve the month's target goal. The monetary reward was inspiring and because of it, employees performed their job effectively and reached their goal even earlier. This situation is a typical example of motivation wherein employees become inspired and motivated because of organizational reward. And that's all about motivation. This is Norman Joseph Doval, your HBO Patroller. Back to you, Christine. Thank you, Norman. To discuss what is the key elements of motivation, here is our Lori Ina for this episode of Saan Canal Lori? HBO Patrol. In this episode of San Canelodi, we are here now at Mga Taramdaang Kalikasan Sambales Road, Pangasinan. As you can see, it is not yet open because of the pandemic. But since 
it is now GCQ, some parts are open, so join me in this journey as we amaze of the beauty of this place. Motivation have three key elements, and these are 1. Intensity refers to the level of effort provided by the employee in that attempt to achieve the goal assigned to him. It refers to how hard the person tries to do work. Number 2. Direction relates to what an individual chooses when he is confronted with a number of possible choices. Number 3. Persistence. Measure how long a person can maintain effort to achieve the organization's goals. I am Ina Din Sibiernes, your resident Lacochera patroller saying that push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Back to you, Christine. Thank you, Lori Ina. To tackle about content theories under motivation, here is Shimaya. Yes, Shimaya. Thank you, Christine. Now let's find out what are the content theories. Under the content theories, we have the hierarchy of needs theory, the ERG theory, the two-factor theory, and acquired needs theory. These theories look at needs and the concept of motivation from different points of view, and how motivation can be effectively carried out. Under the hierarchy of needs theory, we have five levels. First is the physiological needs. These are needs of human for survival, which include air, food, water, shelter, and other bodily needs. Second, safety needs. It is are of humans for safety, security, and protection. Third, social needs, which include affection, belongingness, acceptance, and friendship. Fourth, esteem needs. Are the basis for the human desire we all have to be accepted and valued by others which include internal esteem factors such as self-respect, autonomy, and achievement, and external esteem factors such as status, recognition, and attention. And last, the self-actualization, referred to as our being needs, because it drives to become what one is capable of becoming, which includes growth, achieving one's potential, and self-fulfillment. Abraham Maslow is the well-renowned person for proposing the hierarchy of needs theory. Ilan sa mga limbawa ng hierarchy of needs theory ay una, kapag ikaw ay sobrang gutom na gutom, ano ang unahin mo sa mga needs na ito? Uunahin mo ang iyong physiological needs, ang pagkain, gaya lang din ng kailangan mo ng sapat na pahinga upang lumakas sa sumigla. Pangalawa, kapag may sakuna gaya ng sunog, uunahin mo bang iligtas ang mga alahas at kayamanan mo kaysa sa sarili o pamilya mo? Siyempre, uunahin mo ang kaligtasan mo at ang pamilya mo. Uunahin mo ang iyong safety need. Next is the ERG theory, where ERG stands for E, existence, R, relatedness, and G, growth. Existence refers to needs satisfied by such factors as food, air, water, and working conditions. Second, relatedness, refers to the needs satisfied by meaningful and social and interpersonal relationships. And last, growth, refers to the needs satisfied by an individual making creative or productive contributions. The ERG theory is a need hierarchy theory of motivation that was developed by Clayton Alderford. Pagdating naman sa ERG theory, ang isang empleyado ay namomotivate na pumasok araw-araw at magtrabaho kapag ang kanyang mga pangangailangan ay naibibigay, gaya ng pangangailangan sa kulusugan, sa pisikal at maging sa proteksyon nito. Ang kanyang pag-uugali ay naapektuhan ng kanyang mga needs o pangangailangan. Isa pang halimbawa, Ikaw ay bago lamang sa isang kumpanya, wala ka pang kakilala o kaibigan. Ngayon, tuwing ikaw ay kakain ng iyong tanghalian, iniisip mo kung kanino ka sasama. Siyempre, mas pipiliin mong sumama dun sa mga taong alam mong magbuting impluensya sa iyo at mga taong makakasundo mo. Next is the Acquired Needs Theory. Acquired Needs Theory was developed as a result of a research made by David McLellan and his associates. They found out that managers are motivated by three fundamental needs, which are the need for achievement, affiliation, and power. First, need for achievement. 
refers to a person's desire to do something better or to accomplish something, to solve problems or to master complex tasks. Second, need for affiliation refers to a person's desire to establish and maintain friendly and warm relations with others. They value relationship above anything else. Third, need for power refers to a person's desire to control others, to influence their behavior or to be responsible for them. McLellan believed that the foregoing needs are acquired over time as a result of life experiences. His research found out that people who have high achievement needs to have the drive to advance and to overcome challenging situations, such as those faced by entrepreneurs in introducing innovative new bus business. An affiliation motivated person prefers to work with and the need for power drives successful managers. Bawa, si Sam ay napiling maging leader ng isang group play. Dahil alam ng guru nito na ito'y magaling umahusay pagdating sa tanghalan at upang mahasa pa ang talento nito. Kailangan niya na mag-insayo upang maging successful ang kalalabasan nito. And lastly, the two-factor theory. The two-factor theory is based on the principle that job satisfaction and dissatisfaction act independently of each other. At any workplace, some particular factors can be attributed to job satisfaction, while other factors are responsible for job dissatisfaction. These job factors were classified by Herzberg into two broad categories, the hygiene factors and motivational factors. Hygiene factors refer to those job factors that do not possibly ensure satisfaction over a period of time, but are those factors when absent causes dissatisfaction and lowering of moral. It includes organizational policies, quality of supervision, working conditions, base wage or salary, relationship with peers, relationship with subordinates, status and security. Well, motivational factors are those that deal with the metric of satisfaction and are those factors that ensure satisfaction over a period of time and allow for increased performance of the employees. It includes achievement, recognition, work itself, responsibility, advancement, and growth. Halimbawa, si Sam ay laging ganadong pumasok sa trabaho. Sa loob ng kumpanya, ang kanyang mga kagrupo ay sinusuportahan ang bawat isa. At dahil doon, Motivated siyang magtrabaho upang maging maganda ang kalalabasan ng kanilang produkto at upang magkaroon ng mataas na sweldo. Ngunit kap kapag ang mga kagrupo niya ay mga taong nilalamangan ang bawat isa at mapagmataas, siguro hindi ito masisiyahang magtrabaho kasama sila at hindi mamamotivate na magawin ang best niya. According to the two-factor theory, when the foregoing factors are not present, there is a low job satisfaction among workers and there is lack of motivation to perform. And these are the theories under the content theory. This is Shimaya Imanatlang, your HBO Patroller. Back to you, Christine. Thank you, Shimaya. More exciting news when we come back, so don't miss it and keep on watching. Ayan na ang Armalite, tarat ng hugas na ng pinggan.